Welcome, learner. Let us know something about the heritage of ancient Indian painting, particularly in the Ajanta Caves. Ajanta Caves, situated near Aurangabad in Maharashtra. It is only just 64 or 65 kilometers from Aurangabad. It's a hilly area. There are so many caves in the area and these caves are in the shape of oxbow. That means it is like this and all around the oxbow shape there are different kind of caves. And merely 30 to 32 caves are there and almost all the caves are decorated with sculptures and painting. Before we come to the paintings of Ajanta, let us first know how rich was India in this art of painting. Unlike archaeological evidences or sculptures, it is very difficult to keep the painting in the right shape for the long time. For different reasons, paintings decay. Atmosphere, weather, seepage, I mean strong sunlight are very much in the effect to destroy the paintings. Nonetheless, some of the areas, the paintings are kept nicely. Indian history of painting must be very, very old, but unfortunately, we don't have much examples from ancient India. If we think that our history started from Indus Valley civilization, then there are very few paintings are found in the Indus Valley sites in Mahanjadaro, Harappa, Singapore and other places except some coloring and painting on the utensils they are mostly made of terracotta or clay. But there are a lot of literary evidences from which we come to know the practice of painting in India was very, very old. In Mahabharata, there are a lot of stories where the hero is painting the portrait of his beloved. In many epics like Bhavabhuti and Kalidas, they are mentioned of painting. In fact, it is considered one of the most important qualities of Nagara life or the urban life to learn painting. This is one of the sophistication that is expected from the citizen. So undoubtedly, we can say it's a very old practice of painting, but we don't have any evidences so far. Ajanta was also unknown to us for a long, long time. The story of discovery of Ajanta is also very interesting. Few British soldiers there moving in this area and lost their way. And suddenly they found something interesting when they were moving in this area. And after some time they discovered there was something inside there, there are some caves. These soldiers immediately informed the higher authority and higher authority moved to archaeological survey of that time. And this man who took interest in that, he is actually known as Captain Alexander. Thanks to this soldier who first time realized the importance of this place. After that, there are a lot of archaeological practices going on and they discovered 
all those 30 caves underneath and those are painted by the monks. Dating is also another important thing. Most of the Ajanta paintings are done in the 2nd century CE or 3rd century CE, but it continued for a long time. The patronage are dedicated to Bakataka family or dynasty and the Gupta dynasty. These caves were occupied by Buddhist monks. The monks prefer to live in a secluded place, far from the urban areas. So they chose these Ajanta caves. The caves are here used for two types of dwelling one and other one for prayer. They are known as Chaitas and Biharas. First type is the Chaitas, which is actually place of worship and prayer. Chaitas are a long elongated with an apsidal end. At the end of this elongated area, there is a votive stupa, in front of which the worshippers sit and they pray. And the both sides of the wall, there are some sculptures. And the wall and sometimes the side wall and the entrance, even the ceilings are decorated with painting and sculpture. But most effort of painting are taken in the Bihara. Bihara is the dwelling place and study place of the monks. It is squarish in shape and all the three walls and the ceilings are also beautifully decorated with sculptures and painting. The artists used to work in the darkness of the caves. Still we are not sure that how they could differentiate the colors and use them so subtly with all nuances on the wall. There are many theories about it. Of course, in the morning time, some sun rays enter the caves, but that was not enough for the artist to see and paint such great works. Now, let us know something about the technique, but before that, I want to tell you a person who was most important to bring these paintings in front of the admirer of the world. He is Mr. Griffith, who was the head of the painting department in Bombay School of Art, which later turns into JJ School of Art. Griffith came here and made a lot of copies of these works. I will tell you something about Griffith's comments about the Ajanta paintings that, that will help you to learn very much about its quality. He writes, the little that remains of the painting in the veranda of this cave is enough to show that it was of a very high order as regards drawing, coloring, and designing. Taking into consideration the fact whole of the baranda is exposed to all changes of weather, from the extreme moisture of the monsoon to the intense heat of the hot season with its accompanying 
dry, hot winds. It is remarkable how well the colors have stood this trying ordeal. The blues are as vivid now as they are the day they are put on. So, from his remarks, it's clear that what high standard of technique these painters used, and even after so many years, in fact, it was 1824 for the first time that we came to know about the existence of Ajanta painting. And Bakataka and Gupta, they ruled during 1st century CE and then 2nd century CE and Gupta ruled 6th century CE onwards. After such a long time of thousand years, still all the paintings retain that freshness and the vibrant colors intact. Unfortunately, it is not the weather god, it is human beings that mutilated many of this painting inside the caves. Now let us know what are the technique they used. There are so much researched on this subject, though the scholars are not all unanimous about the technique, but they have come to only one conclusion that they use the tempera technique. Mural painting are those which are done on the wall. The three techniques that we have just discussed, that is one is dry fresco, the other one is wet fresco and the last one is tempera. Dry and wet frescoes were mostly used in the western countries in Europe. You must have heard the famous work of Michael Angelos on the ceiling of Sistine Chapel. That was done in fresco technique. But most of the Indian painters, they always prefer tempera. Let us know what is tempera. Tempera is a kind of paint which is very close to what you use these days, that is poster color. Though they are not chemically made, they are just manually made by local available materials. Tempera is opaque in nature. That means it is not transparent, heavy and that is a lot of white is mixed with these colors. For this reason, since it is heavy and opaque, it is very difficult to bring different tonal quality of colors. The Ajanta if we call it Ajanta paintings or the paintings in the caves, are actually used the tempera technique in a very limited colors. They used only red, blue, yellow, white, black and green. All these colors are available locally, either from vegetation or from mineral. In those days, there is no such uh, chemically uh, uh, making system, but artists they themselves used to prepare their own colors along with the brushes. In fact, in Shilpa Shastra, they are mentioned about how to prepare colors and brushes, which they call in Shilpa Shastra as Kunchaka. The colors first from the things or the material that they fetched from places around, 
ground and then mixed with a binder. Binder is the thing that keep the colors together. That means most colors are actually pigments or in the powder form. And when you mix a binder with that, that become little liquid, a solid liquid. And that is the thing which help to stick the color on the surface. So the binder is also a very interesting thing. The binder mentioned in the Shilpa Shastra is known as a Bajralepa. Bajralepa is made out of buffalo skin and horn, which is kept for a long time in the water and on the sun and then that is actually boiled to get the Bajralepa. Scholars believe that uh, most probably the Ajanta painters did not use Bajralepa because it was nauseating uh, smell and to prepare it also took a long time. And we are not yet sure what kind of a binder they used. Most probably it was something like gum, acacia or anything that is available in the area. So, the artist prepared their own colors and used it. But one color which is not locally available that is lapis lazuli that is abundantly used in Ajanta paintings. Lapis lazuli is a color which neither green nor blue but in between that. These stones were brought from Jaipur side and that is a favorite color of the Ajanta painters. Now how they paint this on the wall? The paintings are done on a rough wall of the caves, but they had to smoothen it surface should be rather a bit plain but not absolutely plain because they have to put plaster on that and that must be stuck on the wall and for that a rough surface is needed. After that they prepare a kind of plaster which according to scholars made of lime, rice husk, some animal hair and some kind of glue that is mixed together and then put on the wall and which is made absolutely plain. They let it dry for some time. After it is dried, what they did? They make a cartoon or what we call layout in these days of a picture that they are going to paint on the wall. For that what they did, they make the, most probably in those days there were no paper, you should remember, most probably the animal skins were used. They draw it on the animal skin first, then make perforation on that and put on the wall and then put some dust or powdered color on a small piece of cloth and thread it on that holes on the wall. So through the small holes, the perforation, those colors are transferred on the wall. Just we do sometime copy or from our uh, sketchbook on the final work. We use a tracing uh, paper but they used this system in those days. After it was over, they take red ochre color and make the line on the wall. After this, they start their colors. Remember, the artist can 
paint some part in a day and for that they needed a lot of light. Still it is a mystery for us what kind of light they use. Some say it is a lamp but uh, this is my experience in Ajanta. If you put light on lamp that turn into red. So you cannot really see the difference of the colors in this uh, lamp light. Some say the reflection of the sunlight were put inside the caves, but that is for a just limited time it is possible. So it remains still a mystery what kind of light they use to paint on the wall. So you see how the Ajanta painters used the technique to keep the painting fresh for thousands of years. The Ajanta painters were actually monks. Their life was dedicated to Buddhism. The monks followed three ratna, Buddhang Sharananga Chami, Sanghang Sharananga Chami and Dharmang Sharananga Chami. Interestingly, all these three commands we see reflected in their work. The life of Buddha, life of Buddha even in his previous births are beautifully executed in these paintings. Colors, as I told you, already very limited. But within this limited color, they made differentiator between different races, different species, even the complexion of the foreigners in this painting. When we see the paintings, we will see how they have used both secular theme and the theme of the royal people along with the spiritual quality. So, Ajanta paintings which is actually coming from very, very ancient time and its predecessors like Bagh and other places we have seen is ultimately made a classical epoch in Ajanta. So, Ajanta painting is one of the most important treasures of Indian painting history. It is famous all over the world for its wonderful colors, wonderful forms and emphasis on the linear quality because most of the paintings are based on lines. Color comes second. So, line is the important thing in Ajanta paintings. So, learners, we have just discussed the method, the technique and use of colors and its qualities and how it was discovered by the foreigners in 1824. Hope you liked it and you will follow it up in future. Thanking you.